Adobe Photoshop is a very powerful image processing package, but contained within it is a sub menu which allows a lot of image processing to be carried out all in the same place. And it's called the Camera Raw Filter menu and it's designed primarily for use with DSLR images. But as we'll see, it has some very useful features for processing deep sky images. For now, we'll start off with a monochrome image. This is an image of the lovely galaxy Centaurus A, which was taken with the Chile One telescope. The image on screen is made up of six 10 minute exposures that have been aligned, calibrated of course, and stacked to produce a master light frame. Now the FITS file that was generated has been converted into a TIFF file using FITS Liberator software. This is because Photoshop can't recognize the native FITS formats generated by the astronomical telescopes. When I prepared the image in FITS Liberator, I've over brightened it a little bit. Actually, it's worked quite well because it does show the extensions of the galaxy, which is generally considered to be an elliptical galaxy merging with a spiral galaxy. But deep images do tend to show extensions above and below the main part of the galaxy. To access the camera raw filter menu, we come up to filter and then just come down to camera raw filter and it opens up this sub menu on the screen. We can zoom in or out on the image just by using the scroll wheel on the mouse and if we wish to move around inside the preview window we can press the space bar on the keyboard and you'll see the symbol changes to a hand and then we can just click on the image and move it around to the position that we like. Now the menu itself has two main features. There's a line of options along here and the first one labelled basic is the one that we're actually looking at at the moment. There are other options along here which we'll look at a little bit later on. Now the main part of the program is based around these sliders here. They're labelled on the left and you can see familiar terms like exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. And there's a couple of other options down here which we can look at in a minute. Now when we're looking at this image, you can see it may look a little bit overexposed um, in that the areas around the galaxy seem a little bit bright. So rather than just actually using the exposure control to adjust that, which we could do, what I tend to find a bit more useful is the highlights slider here. So if we zoom in on the galaxy a little bit and I just drag this over to the left, what you'll see, those areas of bright pixels have been controlled somewhat now just by using the highlights slider. And it's done a fairly good job. When using this menu, you may find occasionally that if you've made multiple adjustments on the image, you may get a little bit lost and, and feel that you might like to start again. And it's quite easy to do that. You can just move the cursor up to this box up here and click on that. And you can just come down to camera raw defaults and the image is just reverted. All of these sliders are reset to their central positions. Another quick fix, which is quite good. If for example, we, if we made a mistake by moving the highlight slider too far up, you can just double click on that and it should just reset itself in the, in the zero position. It's also quite good to be able to see a before and after view of the processing that we're carrying out. And by clicking on this little box down here, I've set it up so we have a before view on the left and an after view on the right. And as before, if you want to center the object so we can see exactly what we're working on, just click on the space bar on the keyboard and just drag it over. So on the left is the before and on the right is the after. You can see these are labeled up here. So let's carry on where we were before and just drag the highlights down. And what you should notice now, the galaxy looks a little bit better now. We've, we've kind of just controlled those bright highlights, but we can see now quite clearly the before and after effects. And as before, if we wish, we can just use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out so we can see the galaxy and some of the sky background as well. 
That's possible because of the way the image was prepared in Fitz Liberator. The sky background might be a little bit light. We'd normally check this just using the levels menu when we're first starting processing an image. But another quick fix which does seem to work very well is to drag the shadows button just down to the left and this does a very good job of actually darkening the sky background. So for now we can click on OK if we're happy with the processing and we'll just examine the image full screen. This is the view of the galaxy having just used the camera raw filter menu. We can examine the stages of processing carried out so far and just off screen I'll use Photoshop's history menu just to step back to the, the original state of the image. And as you can see, it's quite a lot lighter than the end state. This is looking a lot better. Now, we can continue just by going back into the camera raw menu. And what I'll do from now on is to use a keyboard shortcut, um, which I've set up, which is Control R, just to take me directly into the camera raw menu. Now, assuming we're happy with the processing that we've carried out so far, we can explore some of the other options in the camera raw menu. We can move on from the basic option to the second one, which is the tone curve. And this is exactly what it says. It's equivalent to Photoshop's curves menu, but you can access this one from within the camera raw menu. And as always, you can click on the image like this, click on the tone curve to adjust different aspects of the image. This should all be quite familiar if you're used to using Photoshop's curves menu. I'll reset this for now and we'll move on to one of the most powerful aspects of the camera or filter menu and this is where we can apply sharpening or noise reduction to the image. So let's start off and apply some sharpening because the sharpening filter found here is particularly powerful. It's quite easy to use the way I usually work with it is to leave the radius setting set on one pixel and then experiment with the sharpening slider at the top here. I'm going to push it quite a long way over and you can see it's doing a fairly good job of sharpening the galaxy without introducing too many artifacts. I find that this sharpening filter is a very smooth filter. It gives you a good level of sharpening but without putting too much noise into the background. So let's just click on OK and apply this. And once again, we'll just have a look at the before and after. And I'll do that in the same way using the history menu off screen. And hopefully you can see in this demonstration that the sharpening tool has worked particularly well. So that's looking quite good. I'm going to close the image down now. I won't save the changes. And this time I'm going to open up a new image, which is just a single 10 minute exposure, also taken with the Chile 1 telescope of M16, the Eagle Nebula. And this is a single 10 minute frame through Hydrogen Alpha filter. I've chosen this because with just a single 10 minute exposure, through a narrowband filter, the signal to noise ratio is a little bit low and that's why we would of course normally take lots and lots of different exposures which are then stacked together to produce a very high signal to noise ratio. And even just stacking two, three or four images does make a huge difference. And for this image, we'll go back into the camera raw filter menu and I'll demonstrate the noise reduction tool in there. So we use the keyboard shortcut. We can zoom in and we'll find an area of the image where the nebulosity is quite faint um, and then we can apply the noise reduction to the whole image but we'll see it particularly well in this area. So as before we come up to the, the detail menu, we'll go past sharpening this time, we'll come down to noise reduction to where it says luminance. I'm going to drag the slider over to about, around about 40 and that will apply noise reduction to the whole image. So to make it clearer um, I'll apply that and we'll exit the, the camera raw menu and we can do a before and after view here. So on the screen now is the image that's had the noise reduction applied to it and just by off screen stepping back one state 
you'll see that the noise reduction has worked pretty well. Even in the area where the nebulosity is quite strong, it's just kind of smoothed out the rough edges a tad. And that's a very powerful effect. Now we'll explore the camera raw menu's capabilities when dealing with colour images. And in this first example, I'll show you an RGB image that was taken with the Chile 2 telescope, but under very bright moonlight conditions. So, particularly during the red exposures, it seems the moonlight's created a very strong gradient across the image, particularly bad on the left-hand side. But we can go into the camera raw menu, and I'll use Control r again. This takes us into the menu, and we can use this tool up here, which is the graduated filter tool. And the way we do this is to click on that, and then click on the left-hand side of the image, and draw this line across just to where the galaxy starts. This will allow us to modify this part of the image with the strongest modifications being on the left hand side gradually fading away to where this vertical line shows. So the first step to repair this image will take the saturation down and we do that using the saturation slider here on the right. And as I drag that to the left, what you should see is that the worst of that reddish color is draining away. Now this will have an effect, obviously, on the star colors on this side of the image, but that's something we're gonna to have to put up with, unfortunately, to remove the light pollution gradient. What we can also do while we're here is to just darken this section of the sky, because you may be able to see on the screen that it's actually a little bit lighter than the sky over this side, again, caused by the moonlight gradient. And we can use the shadows tool just to bring this down. And then hopefully, when we click OK to apply the image, you can see it's done a fairly good job of removing the worst of the light pollution on that side. If I just go off screen to the history menu and click back to when we first opened the image, you can see the before and the after. And it's been quite successful. Now there are some artifacts still left in the image, but these are probably best dealt with just using Photoshop's other tools, like for example, the color range tool. We'll call upon the camera raw menu and we can apply some sharpening and noise reduction to the image and that should hopefully improve it. So control R to go back into the camera raw menu. You can zoom in this time. And we can start off by applying noise reduction to the image. Now this is quite a good image considering that it's not made up of that many sub exposures. The background sky noise is actually quite good, but we can improve that slightly. And we do that by going into the detail menu and we'll come down to noise reduction again. So we just drag the slider over to the right and you should see the sky background beginning to smooth out. Now once you're happy with the amount you've applied and you can apply further detailed adjustments using these other controls down here. But for now we'll just go with this main luminance noise reduction and then at the same time actually apply the sharpening tool to the image and I'll click on the sharpening slider and bring this over and we don't want to go too far with this just a small amount of sharpening should be fine and then I'll click on OK to apply the image and once again we're just back into Photoshop now hopefully if I show you the before and after you should be able to see that We've smoothed the noise quite nicely and we also applied a small amount of sharpening to the image and that seems to have worked fairly well. As always, I can show you the before and after. We'll start off with the image when it was first opened. Uh, and again, you can see the light pollution gradient from the moonlight here. And come up to the, the later image and it's done a fairly good job of just smoothing out the noise, a small amount of sharpening and correcting the color background. Just to finish off the image, we can apply a quick modification to it using the color range tool. 
and to use that we just come up to select and color range and that opens up this menu and we click on image and by clicking on this central dropper symbol with a plus sign on it we can click and sample multiple points in the image and the plan is just to click where the sky background still has some of that residual redness to it when we click OK we get the marching ants showing us which parts of the image have been selected and can hide that just using Control H and we'll go into the hue saturation menu and take the saturation down a little bit we're just kind of draining the reddishness out of the sky background and once we're happy with that we can go into the camera raw menu just one more time and apply the shadows correction remembering that parts of the image are still selected from where we use the color range tool so this should just darken the sky just a fraction and help remove the last of that natural moonlight light pollution yep that seems to have worked fairly well and again we can just check back one stage that's the previous stage and if we go right back to the beginning this is where we came in and this is where we've ended up so hopefully you'll agree that's really saved a very good image from an image that was actually quite badly affected from the moonlight light pollution.